Okay, well, I guess you're kind of talking about all the people that you've met before. Um, and you talked a little bit about the volunteers and stuff, but what is the kind of your favorite memory that stands out, like interaction with a, one of the partner families that... My favorite memory of volunteers? Um, either volunteers or the partner families or something that stands out. I don't think we ever had a partner family that uh, didn't um, do what they were supposed to do. I mean, they they were faithful and committed to working with us, you know, shoulder to shoulder, whatever had to be done. They went way beyond their ability, every one of them, as most, most of us did at Habitat. I think we all went beyond our we extended ourselves and did things we never knew, dreamed we would ever be able to do. I remember with John and I and, and uh, somebody else, three of us, maybe it was that couple that, uh, that I was talking about, we had to put shingles on this. We took the shingles off and put new ones. I had never balanced on the roof and, and it was blistering hot. And uh, where am I going with this? Um, the people that we met, uh, I mean, that's that's what this whole thing was all about. Um, I don't know, am I, am I answering your question? <laughs> yeah, like, is there like one specific um, just memory with the partner family that you've had that just like has stood out over the years? Oh, I, 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 I will always remember the one family that I lost my temper with. That's the only time that I ever slammed and said, okay, it's over. You know, we're going to go back to basic. That was not a good experience for me. I, I, I didn't know that I could, I, I, that was, I, I, unexpected, I got angry. You got your buttons pushed. Oh, I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but that's good to hear that you, you know, you can only think of one bad thing and all the rest of them were really good things. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Great things. I don't think Kevin can say that. <laughs> um, I'm working on it. <laughs> did you ever get bad? Maybe once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What else do you have? Um, where was it? Oh, so he was talking about before there, I think it's the 122nd house mm -hmm. that is just finishing up. Have like, have you expected the success of the affiliate that it's had? Or like, what's some things that like you didn't necessarily expect that has the affiliate has evolved? Okay, ask me again. So like, just with how the affiliate has grown over time, like have you expected the success that the affiliate has had or? Um, You know what, I, th I think we were so busy. Once it got started, there was so much to do. And there was no end to it. And it never, ever, we never caught up. We were always catching up, but we never caught up. And um, once, once when I left Brainerd and looked back and we, and we said goodbye to all these people, and, I mean, it was so unimaginable that we had accomplished, the church had accomplished what we had. Um, that church in Brainerd was, and it still is, I'm sure. We haven't named that church. The no, United. We, we haven't named that church here. So please share with us the church. The Brainerd Congregational Church. There you go. Yeah. I, I came, I, I was called to that church. Um, and the half pastor before me uh, had been there a long time, 10 or 15 years. And he said, you'll never want to leave this place when the time comes. And boy, was he right. But the time had come for, for us to move. And uh, we've had two churches. 
in 35 years of ministry and uh, I can remember when we drove from Brainerd to St. Cloud and, and my daughter was going to St. Cloud the college here and uh, we said goodbye to her and then she followed us in her car all the way to the expressway and uh, I don't think Carol and I ever stopped crying, you know, but it, the time had come for us to move. And, uh, and we moved to another wonderful church. Um, and I stayed there until I was retired. But the people, it, the whole thing always boils down to the people. Um, you know, you know them as pastor and parishioners, but all of a sudden when they come in their work clothes or they're carrying some something, you know, Paul, were you able to get your new church involved in Habitat too? The new church, no. The Habitat was running when I got to uh, Topeka, and the guy that was running it was a banker and he had a one-man show um, the first thing I did of course when I when I got, I got to Topeka was to check Habitat and that Habitat did not have a good reputation it all revolved around being a one-man show the kind of Habitat I was coming from was not a one-man show So I didn't do that, but what I did do is I read an article about an organization called Character Counts, and um, I was on the board of a um, retirement village. And I read this thing about character counts, and I said, and they had a training program going on in Florida, if you wanted to go to that. So I talked uh, to my church, and I talked to the board. I said, I want, I want to go to this character counts training program. I want to see what it's all about. Well, to make a long story short, I went there, I got like a franchise. It was a franchise, but I like that. And I came back to Topeka with a character counts written all over my chest. The, the bottom line is we got the character counts program in every school in Topeka. We got character counts in the, through the mayor. The city became a character counts city. Great big, huge billboards with Topeka character work. Two people were character counts. That was the big uh, street sign. And uh, the, the vice president of the YMCA, Bruce Holt, and I, uh, and a, another Church of the Brethren minister, who is now in Florida, um, we worked our rear ends off. We had parades uh, and billboards, but most importantly, we had a character counts program in all of the schools uh, except the senior high. The last three, uh, 10 to 12, did not, we, we, we didn't go to the same, but every other one we got character counts, character counts program in. But we did get it into the school's uh, baseball and sports program uh, and all that kind of stuff. But it's a wonderful program. Um, so I went from Habitat to Character Counts. And uh, 
we had just so much fun. It's a good transition. And uh, great people. I mean, the, when we had a character counts orientation, we filled the room. You know, teachers and business people. And and uh, Bruce and I got invited to speak at a variety of Lions Club and all that kind of stuff to talk about the character counts program. How can we develop a city of character? Uh, it was exciting. Cool. I do have one more question, Habitat question for you. Yeah. If somebody was sitting in a presentation right now listening to you talking and they were hearing about Habitat for the first time and they were on the fence about getting involved, what would you say? <laughs> what would I say? That's a good question. I don't know what I'd say, except I'd say, get on the boat and the current will take you. You don't have to do a damn thing. Once that current starts, it'll rule you. And it, you'll, you'll just have so much joy and, and so you'll be so amazed that, that, that where the energy comes from, it's, it's a collection of people around you it's your own personal uh, satisfaction in doing something that's right, something that is right. Uh, in a way, it leads you, but in the way you lead it too, it's 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 a partnership between yourself and this whole habitat program. Uh, habitat took over John Fellowers' life. Uh, he started, to, uh, this is a job, you know. He's gonna, okay guys, we gotta do this and that and that. And he had things all laid out. And so many feet and so many yards. And he was amazing. But, it owned, Habitat owned him. Uh, he ended up big time in Habitat. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we know the lot. feeling. Huh? <laughs> I said that we know the feeling. And he went to work for Habitat International. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, Paul, you just said it incredibly well that if I were listening to a presentation about getting involved and I just heard what you said, I'd be motivated to get involved. So thank you. Yeah, you should get involved, Kevin. <laughs> what, what brought you? I, th I think I jumped off that cliff a long time ago. Yeah. What What got you into it? He wow. didn't know what he was getting into. I did not know what I was getting into. <laughs> I just knew it was time for a change. Um, I had been invited to join a habitat group down in Illinois where I lived for a while, and I had to say no because I knew I was moving to Minnesota and. About a year and a half passed, and then there was an article, a little ad in the paper for the executive director for Habitat for Humanity. I applied, I was interviewed, and I don't know why, but I was chosen. Um, and then I had to say, well, what is Habitat? <laughs> yeah. So, had a lot of good teachers, a lot of good people. Yeah. And... I haven't regretted it for a minute. No, I, I didn't either. You know, you look at people that are coming there and they're doing such extraordinary things. Uh, you say to them and you say to yourself, I didn't know you had that in you. I didn't know, I did. I knew you. I've had coffee with you, I've had minister, I've ministered with you, I preached to you. On Sunday morning but what's coming out of you now I am just awed by it I can't believe 
that there's so much out of such, you know, that one person, woman or man, they they went so far beyond any expectation or knowledge that I might have that they could do that. But they said yes to a lot of things that I think surprised them too. Uh, well, I think you said two really important things, that they said yes and that it helps bring the best out of them. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I'm going to stop and...